All right. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm back with another episode in Okinawa with Azusa from Fishing Gang. So yesterday we were out for mahi from shore and that was a crazy day and he caught that shark. And now we're gonna go out on this boat. We're going for tachuo. The bellfish that they have here in Okinawa is a special kind that grow to over two meters long. Uh, Namae wa o tachuo. O tachuo. Okinawa o tachuo. Okinawa o tachuo. So that's what they call it here. And well, I can't wait. The, the bellfish, this long, from the ground. It's gonna be taller than me. Arigato. Gamarimasou. And we're ready. All right, let's drop this down. It's going down. 310 meters deep. 310 meters. It's been going down for three, four minutes. Still going. How much longer? I don't know. All right, I think I'm on bottom now. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Here's a workout. Come on, stop. Come on, stop. <laughs> the workout starts <laughs> here. <laughs> this is gonna take a while too. First one on the boat. It's a small one. No, they don't fight at all. It just takes forever to bring up. <laughs> there it is. My first bellfish, Tachuo. This size is average, a little small. A little This is a samma or pike mackerel it's called and you just stab this thing right on top it's got right on top it goes on like that and there's a metal wire and that just wraps around wraps around the fish like that boom like this and the treble treble goes in the back that goes somewhere else Boom, it's ready. Yeah, this one does feel heavier. Just a couple more minutes. That's pretty big. <laughs> Holy god damn. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Look at this. <laughs> my second. Whoa. Wow. Wow, this is the biggest one so far on the boat. Sugoi. At least, uh, what do you think, like six, seven minutes to reel up? Yeah. Man, it takes a while to reel this thing up because they're so deep. They don't really fight at all. Just a little heavy. Whew. All right, nice. Let's dispatch them. We're gonna cook this guy up. Hell yeah. So I guess the one I just caught is a medium size. <laughs> That's a medium size. Yeah, I guess two meters is gonna have two more feet. Bigger than that one.
Oh, it's chip that's cut. It's cut. It's cut. Yeah, same, same fish. They'll eat each other. So that's why he got his tail bit off. Chip that's left is two meters. Long. 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 I think I caught enough fish. So I'm just chilling now, hanging out. So I've gone fishing on a boat three times in Japan. And nobody gets seasick, like, ever. And nobody takes anything either, like no drama main or anything like that. Um, I don't know, I feel like it's just a hereditary kind of thing. For Japanese people don't really get seasick due to the long line of fishermen, I guess. <laughs> Everybody's like completely fine and today the boat is rocking. It's been rough the whole day, but everybody's fine. Except for Jocelyn, she's a little seasick. <laughs> but she usually doesn't get seasick. I was just uh, chilling for a few hours because I caught a good amount, so... Uh, and then I just went and had a last go at it. All right, well, that's gonna be it for the fishing. We just finished. Uh, we caught a lot, honestly. Um, I took a break for a few hours even. But anyways, it was good. It was a good day of fishing. We didn't get the, the big ones. The big ones get, I guess, this wide, 10 fingers wide. We'll go back. We won't have time to cook it today, but we'll, do, we'll cook it up tomorrow. All right, now we're back in the kitchen. Well, yesterday was a pretty long day of fishing. Uh, if you were wondering, Jocelyn is feeling okay. She's fine. That was actually her first time getting seasick, but she's all good now. Um, big shout out to Fishing Gang. Make sure to check out their channel. They're very, very informative in terms of fishing and technique. So I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, check them out. Uh, so now we're about to cook this fish up. Uh, this tachuo, also known as belt fish or cutlass fish or ribbon fish, whatever you like to call it. Uh, in English, I usually call it belt fish. Anyways, we're going to fillet it up and we're going to cook them up. All right, let's do this. Yep, that's from zero. That's 50, 56 and three quarters. 56 inches. This is medium, he said. I was like, dang, are you serious? This looks large to me. <laughs> this is 40 pound braid line. Right here, 40 pound braid. Check this out. I'm gonna put it around one of his teeth. Oh, <laughs> barely any pressure. And that thing cut into two pieces. Oh my goodness. Sharp, <laughs> razor sharp. <laughs> Dang, that's scary. There's a couple ways you can fillet this fish. Uh, there's an easy way, there's a hard way. And the easy way is to cut it up into sections. So. If you cut it like this, one, two, three, four, five sections, this would be really easy to fillet. All you do is cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here. Then you can just fillet in individual sections. I wanna challenge myself a little bit and I think I'm going to fillet the whole entire thing, which is a lot more difficult, but wouldn't you rather watch me struggle a little bit? I just have to be really clean with my cuts Now I'm going all the way to the middle bone. That's pretty clean. I'm gonna flip the fish. This is the struggle part. This is crazy. So long. 
because this part is already cut, the belly part, so I don't really have to worry about that too much. So I'm just cutting here. Start with my knife at a 45 degree angle, going down the fish. Boom, right there, all the way to the where the belly ends. And go in to the fish. Keeping my knife pressure downwards. Lift the meat a bit. Top of the spine. When I say top of the spine, it's really the side of the spine. But in this orientation, it's on top. Now I should be able to go through all the way. If I did it right on the other side. See that? I gotta cut through the rib cage, so I'm gonna have to put a little pressure. And there it is. Nice and clean there. There's a little bit of meat there. No meat left there. So nearly, almost perfect. Almost perfect. Now I'm gonna do the other side. Look at this thing. Right now I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna clean up this red part too. This piece right here, that's ready to go. You leave the skin on it. So I have some sauce here. I think this is gonna be really good on here. I'm gonna brush it on. So I scored the skin a bit, and now I'm brushing the sauce on it. It's actually for me, usually, but I think it's gonna be really good on here. All right, and then I'm just gonna pop this in, in here. So I oiled the bottom. Turn the stove on first. Only takes about a minute. You just want to char the skin, that's it. Initially the plan was to make some sushi, but I just freaking cut my finger on a peeler. And I wasn't even peeling anything, I was washing the peeler. <laughs> and I cut it pretty deep with the peeler. Yeah, weirdly enough, I don't cut myself with any of my knives cutting so fast, but just with a peeler while washing it. So I can't make any sushi with this finger, because I don't have gloves either. Make like a donburi. Just we'll put it on top. So 
So it didn't really come out as I had hoped. Uh, so this was the belly part, so it got curled up uh, when the heat hit. And this one looks okay, but it's not crispy like as much as I wanted it. It was a little too wet. I'm gonna try again. I'm just gonna do salt this time. I wish this one just got a little bit hotter. So this is bitter melon right here. It's very Okinawan. I'm just gonna take the middle out with a spoon. Just like that. Just like that. All right. This is the Goya. Goya is, is like the vegetable of Okinawa. I'm just gonna give them a quick sear on both sides. This is not gonna work on here. Well, it's very juicy, it's gonna be tasty. But this little toaster oven is not gonna have high enough heat in order to get the skin crispy. Now, I thought it might work, but you know, there's no heat temperature on here that I can set. So, didn't work. But you know what, it's all good. It's still gonna be tasty. All right, now let's plate this bitter melon. And go around. A little lemon juice as well. Lemon juice, little soy sauce. They call it here the Okinawa o Tachiwo because it grows larger here than anywhere else. And they are also supposed to be the best tasting fish or best tasting out of all the other Tachiwos in Japan. So on the right we have the cooked Tachiwo with a little lemon juice, lemon zest, Goya underneath. On the left, we have the seared skin sashimi, just on top of some simple sushi rice. Well, let's dig in. Itadakimasu. Try it with the goya too. Mm. The fish itself, oh my gosh, it's very juicy. Mm, the lemon. It's I very juicy. Yeah, the lemon is a nice little freshness to it. Oh yeah, this fish. It's re actually really, really good. It's very, very juicy. It's got nice fat content in it. Mmm. It's good. The, the meat is so smooth. Alright, let me try. <clears throat> well, guys. There you go, another catch and cook in Okinawa. Man, Okinawa has been so great. I love Okinawa. It's been treating me so well. Yeah. I love Okinawa. I think it knows too that I have some Okinawa blood. <laughs> I have Okinawa blood in me. So, all right guys, if you like the video, you know what to do. Make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace.